Lawrence Muraya has lived in the United States for over 20 years. He is the founder and CEO of Africa Welfare Association. The association came about because of the need uh, of uh, repatriation. In the diaspora, we've had a huge problem. It's a problem that keeps on growing as our numbers increase. We find that the cost of repatriating our loved ones is uh, a bit uh, prohibitive. It costs anywhere from $10,000 to $15,000 to repatriate one person. But before we delve deeper into what he does in the U.S., let us take you back to his roots. Lawrence grew up in Nakuru County, Kenya, and even at a young age, his go-getter attitude was evident. After completing his university education, he decided to move out of his parents' home before he even got employment. I always thought that uh, when you've been educated, when you finish your school, when you finish university, you don't go back to your parents' house because there's no job there. So I said I have to go and look for a job. So I had a few uh, shillings, which I could afford a mattress. Uh, I couldn't afford the bed. Somebody donated a bed and uh, I didn't have anything to cook with. So I got a servant's quarter in uh, South B. And the first thing I did was to write an application letter to a team, a safari team that had been watching. The safari rally team Lawrence had closely been following happened to be led by legendary safari rally driver, the late Jonathan Toroitich Moy. And in that application letter, I outlined how I would make him a champion within three years. Within two days, I had the job. As his rally manager, we reorganized the team. He let me run the team. I told him what we needed to do, not in terms of driving. He was a very good driver, by, uh, just to let you know. In his own right, he was a very good driver. But in aspects of organizing the team, managing, getting the parts, getting the right uh, mechanics and technicians, that is what he let me do. Lawrence worked for the late Jonathan Moy for six years and it was while working for him that the opportunity to relocate to the U.S. was availed to him. But, unlike most people, Lawrence was not keen on moving. The truth is actually I did not want to be in the U.S. It is not something that I always aspired to be in the U.S. Yes, I was curious like everybody else, but to satisfy my curiosity, I came to visit the U.S. in uh, 1996, uh, December 1996 to be precise. I went to Dallas, Texas. I went to Pennsylvania. Um, I think I did see a bit of DC. I had not been impressed. I had seen for myself um, and I didn't care much for the US. But when I went back home, something triggered my interest in the US. One was my education. Two, in uh, January 97, we had a huge water shortage in Kenya. And as a consequence, there was no power. And living at home and you turn on the tap, there's no water. You know, for weeks, there was no electricity. I said, you know, that place I just came from, I didn't see these problems. So that helped reignite my interest. So in 1997, Lawrence flew back to the US and joined the University of Westchester in Pennsylvania for a master's in finance, economics and accounts. As a master's student, I interviewed for a job to be a consultant. Uh, consulting for the local businesses through the school. When I did the interview, I was uh, ranked second, but I did not give up. I called the office just to find out. I did not know I was second. I just called out of curiosity to say, out of the eight or nine people who interviewed, where did I rank? They told me you were second, and you know what? We have a problem with the number one. Be on standby. Okay. So I became a consultant in the school, consulting for businesses in the area that I never lived in. So they gave me the job, meaning I did not have to pay for my school. They paid me to be in school. And through that process, I was able to help 12 other students come for similar programs. After I you know, finished my master's program, I decided to venture into the financial world. I uh, started uh, in the banking sector. While in the bank, the bank did allow me to venture a little bit into the insurance field because we were not in conflict. And it came to a point where I saw that uh, I was happier doing uh, the insurance bit. Lawrence eventually left the banking sector and focused more on insurance. 
This saw him live in various places in the United States, including New York, Delaware, and currently Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. is the capital of the United States of America. It is located in the mid-Atlantic region of the east coast of the USA and has a population of about 600,000 people. The city has a diverse population with more than half of the inhabitants comprising ethnic and racial minorities. Washington is a top tourist destination with numerous attractions like the Washington Monument, the Smithsonian Museums, and the Capitol Building. Being the country's capital, Washington, D.C. is home to the official residence and workplace of the President, the White House, just like you will find State House in Nairobi. And that is Miles Away. My name is Lavenda Amunga. Lawrence Muraya, who had been studying finance in the U.S., had decided to venture into the insurance sector upon graduating. Working in this sector made him realize the difficulties Kenyans and other African migrants go through when it comes to repatriating their loved ones. The cost of repatriating our loved ones is uh, a bit uh, prohibitive. It costs anywhere from $10,000 to $15,000 to repatriate one person. So that cost, as our numbers have also increased, has become a lot more difficult to bear in the community. So Lawrence eventually established Africa Welfare Association. So if one is a member, if I take myself as an example, uh, I'm already a, a member. If something happens to me, we don't have to rely on fundraisers. The association will take care of everything from the funeral home. They'll contact the funeral home, uh, take over the bills. They will contact the embassy get the paperwork organized, they'll work with the airlines, schedule the flights uh, for my repatriation and my family to travel home. Lawrence, who doubles up as a healthcare consultant, says that all it takes for one to be a member is to register on the association's website and pay a monthly fee of 18 US dollars for a single person or 192 US dollars a year, which translates to 1,800 Kenya shillings a month or 19,200 Kenya shillings a year. We have different uh, levels. So you can buy as a single person. That is $18 a month or 192. You can buy as a couple. If you're together and we do not ask questions whether you're legally married or come we stay. If they're single parents, we can do that as well. And then their families, uh, we have that. We have people who have more than two children because we have limits. When we say family, we take a couple, two children under the age of 18. Now, if they have three children, what do you do? So an extra child is only $8 a month. According to Lawrence, this problem cannot be effectively tackled by one individual or one company. It requires partnerships. I want to say they're similar, not equivalent. Similar in the sense that they are sensitizing the, uh, the diaspora uh, of the need to come together and tackle this problem. Like I said, it's a growing problem and that's why you see many people acknowledging there's a problem and trying to find a solution. On Daring Abroad, we featured a similar initiative by Dr. Aquilas Muteti, an initiative known as Ukarimu. And Lawrence says Muteti is a person he would like to partner with. We do speak. Uh, he's a very nice gentleman. We haven't met. I did watch him on your show. That's how I got to know about Ukarimu. Uh, I think he has a role. Uh, he plays an important role in the West Coast. We're in the East Coast. Even though the Welfare Association is currently targeting Africans living in the U.S., Lawrence hopes to expand the association's services worldwide. So if you have Ugandans who are in Joburg, they can participate. So it's all about the diaspora. As long as you do not live in your home country, you're in the diaspora, you can actually participate. But right now, it's just the US. But we are quickly going to roll it out to Canada, to UK, um, and Australia as well. Lawrence uh, of our African Welfare Association, again, I challenged him. I said, we are spending so much money on fundraising. 
to take the bodies of, of our loved ones back to Kenya when they pass away. You know, why don't you come up with an insurance based, not merry-go-round. Merry-go-rounds don't usually work. If you, have, if you give money to two beneficiaries, it wipes out the, the pooled resources. But if you have an insurance based one, the insurance company takes the risk. So he has come up with our African Welfare Association. So uh, I've really been very happy the way the diaspora here is working. Lawrence says that going to the U.S. was the right choice, despite his reluctance to move here in the first place. He adds that Kenya still has a lot to learn from the West. In America, we don't have the same problems. You will never see somebody from Tennessee asking you where you're from. And if they ask you where you're from, it's because they're interested in other things geographical. For us, we still ask each other, where are you from? And I question, what does it matter where I'm from? Ask me where I'm going, because we can go together. Where I came from, I already came from there. It's done. Ask me about the future. And this is his advice about living in the U.S. on our diaspora bite. America is a good place to be. I tell people there are many avenues to succeed and equally many avenues to fail. But you have to have the vision. What do you want to pursue? What do you believe in? Who are you? First, you have to identify yourself, then figure out what you want to do. Mm -hmm.